Welcome back to the art room. Mrs. Larrabee here. Today we're going to be going for our, wait, let's see, five, six uh, element of art. I had to think about how many we've covered so far. All right, let's do our hand motions for the first few. We've talked about line, shape, form, color, value, and today we're going to add space to that. <laughs> so there's our hand motion for space. I'm going to explain to you what I mean about space. Let me go through our supplies really quick though. You're going to need something to color with today. Whatever you have at home, paints fine, markers, crayons, colored pencils. You're going to need two sheets of paper and then, um, oh, and a pencil. We're going to be drawing out some things first. And then some sort of circle shapes. You don't have to. This is optional. I like to draw mine freehand. And we'll talk about some um, ways to do that. But different um, circle shapes, cereal bowl works pretty well on a regular sheet of paper. That's optional, but something you might need. And let's talk for just a minute about what space is when I refer to space in artwork. All right, space is the whole plane of our artwork, but we can separate it into something called positive space and negative space. Positive space is where the object, which is the focus of your artwork lies. So on this piece of paper, I have a circle, or today we might call it a dot. The inside of this is my positive space. This is the focus of this piece of artwork. If I were to remove this, I would remove the positive space and all around the edge would be considered my negative space. This is kind of a generalization about space, but we can know that the focus of our artwork is considered positive, the space around it is considered negative, and because these two touch sides, they share the same sides, sometimes in artwork it's really interesting to focus on the negative space. If you listen to the book, The Dot, which is up above in the link, you'll hear the story of Vashti. She is a art student who was having a hard time getting started on an art project and just felt like she couldn't do it. I don't know if you guys have ever had that feeling before. Maybe art is not the... Um, top subject on your list of favorites. Maybe it is and you just come to art sometimes thinking, I don't have a creative idea. Oh, I understand. I have those times too. Whether it's your favorite subject or not, we probably all sat in front of a blank sheet of paper and wondered what we were going to do. Whether it was something we were writing, something we were drawing, an idea that we were trying to express in some way. Vashti experiences this in the book and she experiences the frustration that comes with it. And she's encouraged in the book to start. <laughs> she started with just a dot on the paper. And then she got really creative with that dot. And today we're kind of going to use that as our jumping off point, not only for our artwork today, but also just as that reminder that creativity is something that we have to kind of start at. We have to start somewhere. And creativity is also something that we inspire. We inspire it in other people. Seeing your artwork inspires me and in how to respond to what we're doing in our lessons and how it's working for you. It also inspires me to do artwork myself. You guys have some amazing ideas that I would never come up with. So doing that together, collaborating would be that word when we're working together. You guys collaborate in your classrooms as well. When we collaborate, we just can inspire each other and kind of move each other along. So today is going to be a little bit of collaboration between you and I, and then it's going to be your decision making as we move forward with this project. All right, so I'm going to move this guy out of the way. Here's some examples. We'll talk more about this, but we're going to be talking about different ways and different supplies that we could use for this project. I'm going to set these aside for right now. We talked um, already at the beginning about practicing. Sorry, I'm dropping things off the table. About practicing and that when we come to art together, especially if we're in an art class, we're spending some time practicing towards a skill. And it's great eye-hand coordination. It's um, great brain exercises. I mean, it has so many benefits other than just producing artwork. So um, we're going to look at one way that we can work on 
our creativity and our work on our practicing and then turn that into our final work of art. So I ask you to get two sheets of paper, put one aside. You're gonna use the one you're putting aside for your final piece of artwork. So um, this could even be a scratch sheet of paper if you have something um, there that maybe has something written on the other side, that's fine. This can be a scratch sheet of paper. We're gonna use it kind of like a sketchbook today. I'm gonna show you guys my sketchbook. This is how I do my lesson planning. Um, I sit down with my sketchbook and I write down ideas and I try little things and see what works. We're gonna do something kind of like this today. So I'm gonna show you guys my sketchbook. This was literally me planning this lesson with you guys. I looked through the dot day book and I was thinking, how can I use the space on a piece of paper in different creative ways? And so I just came up with different ways on my paper. And then I chose some of those to use for final artwork, the ones that really seem the most interesting to me. So it's kind of like brainstorming when you brainstorm for maybe a writing assignment or even sometimes for um, some of our other subjects, right? We need to brainstorm. I'm gonna set this aside. If you have a sketchbook, if art is something that you really enjoy, I encourage you um, to have a sketchbook. Whether it's, it can be a lined piece of notebook, um, notebook paper sketchbook, it can be just simply pieces of paper um, stapled together, just regular paper, just somewhere together where you can jot down ideas. Because uh, if you go back and look at some of the great artists, oh, I'll try to put a couple of links on here they had sketchbooks and not every piece of artwork that we see by them they didn't they didn't just sit down and create the mona lisa <laughs> they didn't just sit down and create some of these amazing works of art a lot of times we can go back if they've preserved their sketchbooks we can go back and see that they worked towards this idea and then one of these ideas came to fruition came to being finished and seen as a work of art so we're going to be practicing just the same skill that these artists use i hope that it's a freeing thing for you and takes a little pressure off too i'm going to push my sketchbook to the side and we're going to start with our scratch sheet of paper or your sketchbook whatever you have by drawing eight rectangles on our paper this does not have to be exact you know what i am going to switch to a marker. Let me grab a marker real quick. I forget sometimes that it doesn't show up super well. And because it's handy, I'm gonna use a purple marker. But I would recommend that you use a pencil for this part. Okay. All right, so we're going to add eight rectangles on our paper. These rectangles are going to represent our pieces of paper. So we're just going to make miniature pieces of paper, basically. They don't have to be in any certain order. They don't have to be perfect rectangles. You can orient them up and down like this or side to side. Okay, here's eight. And just like Vashti in the book uh, had all these different ways that she found out she liked making a dot, we're going to think of a few ways. I'm going to think of some ways with you. I'm going to show a few as a way of collaborating with you and hopefully um, maybe getting your, your mind going, a little inspiration. And then I'm going to have you fill in a couple of these squares on your own. So let's do a couple of collaborations together. Vashti, when she started in the book, she just simply put a dot. So on your first square, just put a dot. I want you to think a minute, what could I add to this dot to change it? You know, maybe you don't want to add anything. Even the fact that it's a little off-centered is kind of interesting. <laughs> that can simply be it. Think about your positive and your negative space. If you were to do this, um, maybe your dot would be one color and then the background would be a really interesting texture we're going to talk about that next week but have um maybe watercolor behind it and just simply a dot on it so that could that could easily be one piece of our artwork today but let's think of a couple of other ideas um i this one kind of reminded me of our form last week for the spray can and then we could use cross hatching depending on what the supply is we could actually make this look three-dimensional Okay, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. I can show you a little bit more of how to do that, but there's just an idea. We're just brainstorming together right now. Um, another idea would be, oh, <laughs> um, Kadinsky is an artist that I think is really fun. And he does this thing with circles. I'll link it here for you, where they're um, 
they go out from the center with all of these different colors and it's kind of cool and he puts a lot of these circles together and it makes such a neat picture when you have them in mass when you have that many together on our sheets of paper i don't know that we could fit that many but you know you could do a smaller you could plan something like this with different colors and you could fill your whole paper with it kind of kadinsky style all right so there's oh there's a couple of ideas we're just look at them their ideas are just flowing now all right you guys get the idea i would repeat this i would do my whole paper like this all right so if any of these are catching um, your mind a little you can jot down this idea too on your sketch paper i like the idea that vashti had of making a circle without making a circle which was kind of that positive and negative space that we talked about earlier this is a circle without a circle in the middle of it so what could we do around the edges that would make a circle and uh, here's what i did i made a, like a dashed line around and then i just kept going out kind of radiated out from there and you know it doesn't even have to be this kind of line you know it could be like wavy lines out from the side zigzag lines that'd be kind of cool to see how that would work so there's another idea using your negative space to form a circle um, here was another what if i made a circle out of circles and then you know maybe if i wanted to make that circle out of circles with some lines you know now we kind of got this radial symmetry thing going on what else could we add around it just to be interesting you could add patterns all right okay so there's six ideas we've brainstormed together if you like some of these add them to your sketchbook but now i want to see you come up with two ideas on your own i'll stick mine back down here i think i had a few others yeah a few others that i didn't go over like um this one <laughs> sorry it's off the thing this one uh, they were like actually going off the page and here what if i this was kind of the same idea with the negative space what if i did the background and had a lot of dots on it what if i did the dots and added some designs to it this one i was going to do um, with watercolor so i couldn't really sketch it out but i wrote my words in all right so pause the video Take a minute to fill in these last two squares with some ideas about dots. If you want to fill in more, you can. And then come back and we're going to talk a little bit about supply. So do some brainstorming. All right. You've got your last two circles filled in, right? Oops. I bet you do. Okay. So now what we're going to do with our paper is we're going to choose the idea that we really like the most. I have to say, after I started doing this one out and planning it, I was like, eh, I don't, for me, I wasn't quite there, but that doesn't mean you wouldn't be and you wouldn't do a fabulous job. So don't let that dissuade you from doing it. But anyway, I was just going through and choosing. You only need to choose one. I chose three just because I wanted to show you a couple of different options. So you're gonna take your other sheet of paper and now you're gonna transfer this idea onto this paper in a larger form and you're going to color it in however you want to. So here's some examples of what I had. This was one of the ideas from my sketchbook, and I kind of did the Kandinsky, Kandinsky circles. Um, and then I kind of liked the idea that they got smaller. I meant for them to go off the page, and then I didn't make them big enough, but that's okay. See, that's part of art. So maybe if I did this again, I would make this one larger. I think that that would kind of really stand out. I just did this with watercolor, um, I didn't, I did use watercolor paper for one, but this is actually on regular printer paper. If you have specialty watercolor paper, I always recommend that, but it's not necessary. You can use some watercolor on regular paper and it sometimes gets a little wrinkly, but that's fine. You can put it in a book and it'll stay. All right. I used my color, warm colors and cool colors, and then mixed them in together. All right, here's one using form. I have to say, I had a lot of fun with this. This one I did with crayon, and I actually, um, I told you guys I was gonna show you about circles. You could trace a bowl for this. This would be about the size of a cereal bowl, I think. But another way to do circles is to sketch them. And I'll talk on and off about doing um, practice sketching or air drawing. It's where I'm not yet putting my pencil on the paper, but it's all muscles. It's muscle memory. It's using our muscles to draw. And so sometimes this works. And then I put my pencil to paper and I make just really light sketching lines. 
And then I can kind of solidify these lines a little darker and start to form a really nice circle. So you don't have to have something to trace. If you're somewhere and you're like, I don't have a circle, that's fine. You don't have to. Use these sketching circles and you can always go in and edit your lines and erase them as you need to. Okay, or if you have a bowl, you can copy your bowl. <laughs> All right, so here's one. I used my crayons. I chose three colors that I liked, and I just started with the dark around the edge, and then I thought about where my light would shine right here, and this is where my shadow would be. So my darkness is here. I went back over it. I liked this light green color, and I could get a little more color in with the light green, and then I went back with my darkest blue, and it just added a little more depth to the picture. It's that idea of layering colors, of layering design. It uh, just adds a little more oomph to the picture, a little more depth to it. So this was one of my sketchbook ideas. Here's another one. I, I just think this idea of positive and negative space is so cool. And so this one, I, I sketched out a circle, and then I just started adding color to it. I used marker for this one. It could easily be done with any other color supply. And I decided to use dash lines, but like we mentioned in our sketching, it could be wavy lines, curvy lines, uh, all sorts of things. You could even make your lines um, radiate out instead of around. And then I went back and erased the circle in the middle. I kind of like the... the um, effect that this one gives it looks like it has a lot of movement to it right all right so i can't wait to see what you do with your circle uh this week is international dot week the 15th which is tuesday is specifically international dot day if you um were to go online with the okay of an adult then you could look at other people from across the world as they do this day, recognizing creativity, recognizing the ability to just go for it, to start and to inspire each other. I hope that this is a, a thought that can keep us through some of our other art lessons when something might not be coming as easily to us as we want it to, to remember that's okay. That's part of this process. That's part of us practicing together. You guys inspire me all the time, and I'm grateful to be doing art with you. Hope you have a wonderful week. Enjoy your dot day and send me some pictures.